This lesson is to mainly explain the difference between absolute and relative cell referencing. I'll just dive right in. Whenever you reference a cell in Excel, it'll use a column and a row. So here we have C5. If you put it in without any dollar signs, it is known as relative cell referencing. So this 70, which just to show you what that formula is, anything you put in a cell, if you put a, an apostrophe at the beginning, it will not view it as a formula. It will just show exactly what you write. So it shows C5. When we take this and use the autofill drag, so that when, when your cursor turns into this little plus sign, you can drag whatever your formula is over. And here you'll see that it actually changed it to reference different cells as we moved across. If we then took this whole range and drag that down, we have the same thing as we have right here. Note down in the bottom right where it tells you different information. The sum is 3904. Sum here should be 3904. So with relative cell referencing, as you move where you are in the spreadsheet, as you move the formula around, it'll offset it by that many columns or rows. And so if I delete these, you'll see if I, if I copy this and put it into somewhere random in the table, it'll grab that area. But sometimes we don't want the cell reference to move around as we copy and paste from area to area. To. We might have a certain percentage that we want to always use, so we'll have one cell that we'll always want to refer to and not have it change places. So the way to do that is to use what's called absolute cell referencing. If I click into the formula bar, basically it requires you to put a dollar sign before the column and the row. If you do that, it'll always refer to C5. And so when I copy down across, it still shows 70, and all of these are C5. And when I copy it down, they're all 70. And you can do this on the row and columns individually. So instead of doing an absolute for C5, we might want the column to always be the same, but the row to change. So if I delete the dollar sign there and leave it just behind the C, let me delete everything else just to make it not as confusing. As I go to the right, it won't change at all. It'll always be C5. But as I go down, since the row didn't have a dollar sign before it, it'll add one to the row every time. Same thing if you do the opposite, put the dollar sign only before the row. As I move across, it will change the column. C, D, E, F, G, H. But then as I copy it down, it'll stay the same row. And so depending on how you set up your formulas, there may be reasons why you'd want the row to stay constant or the column to stay constant. Like let's say you were doing a lookup formula. I'll just do a quick example. You might not know the VLOOKUP formula yet, but if we wanted to look up student1 in a table, this is all gibberish at the moment because it doesn't matter, and it's actually going to spit out an error. So I will put that uh, apostrophe before it. Here, it, when you copy this VLOOKUP formula down, it would move B5 to B6 to B7, and it would look up student 2, student 3, student 4. But let's say you wanted to copy this to the right and still have it look up the students. You would want a dollar sign prior to the B so that as you copy the formula to the right, it does not have a negative impact. And just to be real quick, I'll actually make this formula work. So if we want to look up student 1, I'm going to put a dollar sign before the column. We're going to look it up in this area, which I'm going to make an absolute reference. There's a, a trick you can hit F4, and it'll make everything an absolute reference. Also, if you hit for F4 multiple times, it'll scroll through the various options between whether it's both row and column, col or just the uh, row, just the column, or nothing at all. And so I want to look up student one in this range. Column number is the next thing we need, so we're going to put two, so it'll grab the 70, which means the, the second column in the range that I chose. And false would be an exact match, so that's what I would like. 
And right now, actually, I'm going to put a 2 and a 3 and extend that out. That's how, by the way, that's how autofill works. It'll try to guess what you're doing there. I was obviously going 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it, it filled it in for me. And instead of using the 2 here, I'm going to point to this cell and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the row. That's because I always want it to be pointing to that row. And this may be a little bit complicated for those who haven't used a VLOOKUP formula, but this is a good example of how you would use absolute and relative cell referencing to extract some data. So now, as I move it across, you'll see that it's picking up correctly, 54, 92, 33, 61. And that's because I kept the dollar sign in front of the B at the beginning. Otherwise, if I did not have this here, if I just had B5, it would give me an error. And that's because it changes from B5 to C5, so it tries to look up 70. And as you, go, as you move it across, it does not work. So let me redo that. Now you'll see, as I copy down, if I didn't have this dollar sign here before the column reference K4 when I drag it down I will have similar problems and that is because instead of looking at K4 it starts looking at K5 and K6 so when I leave the dollar sign in it should look up each student in the table and bring the second column of information over and then as I copy this to the right, it should also do the same thing. And so hopefully this area, 3904, is the same as this. That's through using the VLOOKUP formula. But if I hadn't uh, made the range an absolute reference, if I hadn't put the dollar sign before the column and the dollar sign before the row, this formula wouldn't have worked. And so it's a good example of how setting formulas up properly and using dollar signs in the correct place can make or break your formula.